so uh, thank you so much for attending this episode of Life Talks. Uh, I know you're a very busy person. Uh, nakikita ko yung mga stories mo lately and um, you're part of the L&D, right? Learning and Development. Mm. So you're you're yeah, working yeah. with uh, different levels of the organization and and all of those things. Uh, I just want to know uh, how did it feel like when you first transitioned from the Philippines? Uh, na all Filipino team. Then now hmm. uh, you're here with with people from different cultures, different nationalities. What is what did it feel like? So basically, uh, this one is not new to me because uh, in my first years in the profession as a CPA, as an auditor, I also work with other nationalities like uh, European, for example. And then I also had some collaborations uh, with professionals from Asia and the Pacific for some projects. But this is my first time in the Middle East working with uh, Middle Easterns and South, uh, South Asians with a totally different environment from religion to culture and even work ethics. So currently uh, here in the Middle East region, I work. Um, as part of the professional practice of the firm um, and then as part of the audit learning and development. And then, uh, so we provide consultations to engagement teams and then I also provide uh, trainings to our professionals. So yeah, this is totally a different thing, particularly on religion, for example, when I do trainings, I always consider the prayer times of the participants because most of the uh, participants in our trainings here are Muslim. So uh, I need to check ano ba yung, uh, times for their prayers, for example. So those are some of the considerations. Nag-research ka ba? Or um, parang ano ba yung mga preparation mo ng mga do's and don'ts mo? Parang how did you create that like parang list parang checklist or reminders of your do's and don'ts when you when you came to the to 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 another country actually when i visit a certain country or uh, now working here in the middle east i don't usually read the history and uh, culture before i arrive be- uh, because i want to be surprised what's happening in the country what's happening in the region so what i usually do is to check what are the activities not allowed and even ano yung mga ano, um, dress codes for example so those are the basic things i check and then when i arrive in a certain country dun ko na ano dun ko na inaaral yung culture ah kaya pala sila ganto pag arrive mo sa airport for example so and dami ko natututunan and then uh, last few weeks i just had um some activities i mean uh, lessons classes for uh, arabic language was it completely different to, than what it is in the Philippines? Because, sure, in the Philippines we also have uh, Muslim brothers there, mm. brothers and sisters. So, um, pero culturally wise, ano yung mga striking uh, differences? Um, sa culture mo na, mama yaya pupunta tayo dun sa pag nakapasok ka na dun sa sa firm. So, uh, meron bang mga striking differences uh, when you came here? What's different here and in the Philippines? Uh, loyal to their uh, country, to the kingdom specifically and then uh, second is that yung uh, dress code na so mahilig ako mag shorts pero now I just read the news that uh, male can now uh, wear shorts and then uh, second is that um, kung paano ka makipag usap actually kasi when you go to a certain country uh, you would be expecting some drivers or some people na they know how to speak uh, English but here it's uh, challenging sometimes because um, they speak mostly Arabic and then you need to keep your language uh, simple so that they would understand what you're trying to uh, say. So those basically were the challenges uh, before when I uh, came in and then ayun, na ano na, naging um, na sanay na tayo doon sa ganong culture. Mm-hmm. 
Ayun nga eh. So, tuwing mga nakakakita ko ng mga grammar enthusiast, <laughs> tawagin na lang natin silang grammar enthusiasts like sa Facebook, like mm-hmm. magkamali ka lang ng parang onting mm-hmm. ano, yeah. like punctuation mark, like super ikbabash ka na or ikakancel ka na. Try niyong pumunta sa Middle East to make you guys realize na sometimes the message is more important Uh, probably oh it's important when you're in a business meeting but but in every, everyday life hindi mo naman kailangan laging ano mang, mang cancel because just of simple grammar or something like that pero so sa Philippines uh, and sa sipag ng mga tao obviously so they work uh, overnight overtime pero hindi ako ganun <laughs> personally but <laughs> but uh, here in the Middle East Ganun din, actually. But, uh, dalawa yung napansin ko. They always want to talk. They want to sit down and they want to talk. So, you always need to listen to them. And then, uh, second is that um, masipag sila in a sense na parang even weekend, gusto na nilang mag-work. Ganun yung passion nila, yung uh, drive nila. Arabs and even uh, South Asians. Nakikita ko din naman sa Philippines yun. Pero sa Philippines kasi, ano, I mean, as a hula. Uh, okay. So, ganun din yun nakikita ko sa Philippines. Pero ang drive kasi kung bakit nag-work sa weekend, for example, is uh, kailangan po sinto kasi ang dami deadlines. Ganun. And then, tambak na yung work. Pero dito kasi, yung pagiging pag-work nila over time, but not overnight and weekend, sa kasipagan nila yun na, ano na mag-work talaga but uh, that thing I changed that uh, culture actually in our group in our department I think they realize that as a person I don't want um, working overtime and uh, working weekend so I think that is the uh, good thing implementing this kind of culture like kaya naman pala nila na ano na mag work during the weekdays and mahalin nila yung self and family nila during weekend so those are the things na kinaya na natin improve in um this uh, culture in the group in the department uh, adjustment madali ako nakapag adjust actually kasi uh, you need to be flexible eh. when you are in the profession you need to be flexible flexible and you need to adapt and embrace the culture and environment that uh, you currently have to have a uh, collaborative approach in managing the people in managing the activities within your department within your group it's li- it's really important but um, you need some time as a professional and as an ind- individual to embrace this culture and norms So, what I advise is that uh, take your time in understanding the culture and uh, building your relationships with uh, your peers, with your team members in the group and in the department. It's really important to understand where they are coming from. Is this uh, a cultural issue or is this a personal issue? So, you, un- you need to understand those things. How is it any different um, when you are... Kasi syempre, for example, tayong mga Pilipino. I mean, hindi naman to sa pagiging stereotypical. Pero syempre, syempre, I mean, alam mo yun, mag- magkaka-peers tayo eh. Uh, I just want to know, how how it, how it is it different here when it comes to uh, dealing with uh, with conflicts? Actually, naghihintay nga ako ng intense na, in, na ano dito eh, na conflict sa interactions. Pero wala akong maramdaman dito. And uh, wala akong makita nagchichismisan. Actually, like sa ginagawa natin sa Philippines kasi in a normal uh, workplace. Parang normal na, na, na pag-usapan na, uy, si ganito, na merong conflict, may pag-aaway. Ganito. Pero dito kasi parang work is work. Uh, I mean, hindi pinipersonal kung ano man yung mga sinasabi, for example, kapag kinorek mo yung isang uh, tao. Pero uh, siguro I need to have a differentiation between the millennials and Generation Z in uh, the Middle East and the uh, boomers. I think sa boomers, ganun yung nangyayari. 
but for millennials for uh yeah millennials and gen z for example because i have uh two staff they are supervisors actually if you tell something to them tapos uh with regard to their work um nahirapan silang tanggapin yon so as a manager for example you need to give them a specific incident or event kung bakit mo sila kino-comment on that one and then a uh, second is that dapat kalmado lang yung pagkakasabi mo kasi i read in a uh, link in a uh, post that um saudis and even south asians like uh, indians they don't want confrontations so as managers you need to uh, develop a good communication with them when uh, communicating this kinds of uh, feedback to them and then you need to coach them basically how to um, listen to this kinds of uh, feedback say alamo um that's also that's what i like about you know PJ, even even from before kasi alam ko before nagahandle ka ng mga bata from different mm. universities uh, i like how you handle these kinds of situations as if you're walking always on eggshells so ano so um you're also a, a coach even way back in in the philippines mm. uh, and now you're coaching different levels of the organization i i want to know how do you over uh, what are the barriers or in this organization with varying experiences ages ideals uh, how do you as a coach bring uh, yourself to fill the gap basically you just need to understand the background of that professional for example or a leader and uh, second is you also need to understand the country culture because for example here Uh, we have Indians, we have Pakistanis, we have Africans, we have Arabs, we even have Europeans. The thing here is that you need to understand where they are coming from. Like for example, when we go to the Philippine uh, setting, leaders there are too empathic that they want to understand even the single most uh, detailed uh, information. But here in the Middle East, for example, the South Asians and the Middle Easterns, they want a high-level information. So you need to tailor those kinds of uh, messaging to them. That's for the leaders. Uh, but for the entry levels, for supervisors, experienced professionals, for example, you need to understand their needs. So if I am an entry-level professional, Uh, what kind of technical support do I need? What kind of emotional support do I need? And then for um, mid middle management, uh, what kind of technical topics do I need to deliver to them? Uh, how how high is the level uh, I can give to them? So you need to tailor those kinds of uh, messaging to them. And then another realization is that um, when it comes to communication you need to understand kung paano yung pacing nila ng information kasi sometimes uh, they understand english yes uh, but sometimes yung simple lang and sometimes yung hindi mabilis na pagsasalita so um kailangan mo ding tailor yung ganong pacing mo Napakatalino nila actually. They know the standards, accounting standards, auditing standards, even the methodology, the concept of a uh, business. Pero when it comes to communication, kailangan mo lang talaga makinig sa kanila. You need to have an active listening and um have an understanding para malaman kung saan sila nanggagaling. And another tip is that don't worry if you don't understand them initially. You can always ask them to clarify what they are trying to say. Because that's the problem sometimes. There's a communication barrier because of that. We always assume na naintindihan natin sila. 
but uh, the problem is that iba pala yung dine-deliver nilang message. So, this is the bridge, pero no nakarating na sa dulo, iba pala yung understanding nila. So, you need to clarify those things. Gusto ko lang din malaman, no? I mean, from your perspective, hindi ba nakakapagod? Kasi, um, I don't know, if you're con- constantly switching, uh, coaching different people, minsan kasi may mga... Even, for example, in our daily lives, di ba? We, uh, in our daily lives, we have different set of friends. Mm. Uh, minsan kapag kasama mo tong friend group na to, meron kang mga certain habits. Kapag mm. kasama mo naman tong ibang friend group na to, meron ka certain habits. I, I want to know, in, in, in the sphere of coaching, hindi ba, hindi ba nakakapagod na parang baka minsan... So, so, da- dahil ang madalas mong coach is or ang madalas na nagbibigay ka ng presentation is towards uh, higher level management na minsan kapag nag-shift ka naman sa ano sa mga entry level experience uh, uh, hires is minsan masyadong nagiging technical or masyadong nagiging highly alam mo yon parang hmm. masy- nag- tapos kapag naman masyado kang nagsuspend ng time sa um, sa, sa other end pagdating mo naman sa other end, like, masyado mo namang na-oversimplify and stuff. I just want to know, paano mo na switch na ba-balance yung, yung ganong pagpapalit-palit ng, ng habits and style? Actually, uh, before I meet these uh, professionals, I have my own uh, needs analysis. So, uh, I understand what are their needs. And then, if you first uh, meet them, you need to build a rapport and you need to ask questions to them. Like, ano ba yung gusto nila? Ano ba yung um, naintindihan nilang concept, for example? And start from there. And then after that, after having that first meeting, you'll know uh, at the end or maybe throughout your uh, journey kung paano mo ibabalance yung messaging. Uh, lalo na if sama-sama na sila no paano sila ano paano mo ite-tailor yung uh, messaging paano ka gigit na so ganun lagi yung ano mo ganun lagi yung uh, concern mo but um, yun kailangan mo magkaroon ng needs analysis kailangan mo intindihin uh, ano yung kailangan nila as professionals as leaders as um, entry level so Ako naman, parang nasanay na din ako doon sa ganong concept. So, that has been my life for years now. You need to have a passion um, for that one. But uh, again, my definition of passion is not doing what you love. No? Lagi ko siyang inuulit-ulit. It's about loving what you do. You always... Yeah, it's challenging the work, the job, the role, the responsibility. But um, to overcome those challenges and to become successful in your journey and in the profession, in the environment where you, where you are currently in, you need to have that uh, passion. You need to love what you do because that's your role. Eh. And for me, this is not just a job for me. Uh, coaching, mentoring, training, a uh, professional, this is a passion for me. Uh, to give knowledge, to give insights to them, and um, to support them um, in their growth as a professional and as an individual. So, alam mo, I, I really, I, I really love how how you how you tailor this this message. Because I can really see from you na talagang you really love what you're doing na parang you know parang kahit saan ka itapon kahit itapon kasi siguro sa gitna ng Pacific Ocean tapos maglaglag ka doon sa isang island doon there, there are groups of um, native people na who doesn't know how to speak English kahit doon ka itapon feeling ko coach mo sila into something useful <laughs> because because I, I like what you said you really love what you do and eventually talagang minahal mo na siya. Hindi mo na lang ginagawa yung gusto mong gawin. Eventually, nagustuhan mo na rin talaga yung ginagawa mo. So, yeah. for, the last, uh, so for the last part, uh, I just want to know, sy- syempre, uh, we talked about your experience, about changing and everything uh, as a coach. Uh, for those people who are watching that are probably being coached, uh, on the, uh, from, for the other side of the spectrum, um, can you give us tips on how 
can you make the most out of of a coaching session? So for this professionals or uh, younger individuals, for example, I always say one thing, and that is you need to be coachable. Meaning, you need to listen to the insights. You need to listen to the comments. You need to listen to the feedback. So don't take them personally. Uh, the reason why a coach is giving time for you to you is they love you as a professional and um, they get something pro- from you and that is for example productivity your performance so as a uh, coach as a mentee you need to listen to this uh, coaches to these mentors because they have this uh, experiences already this particular experiences are not just technical uh, support but uh, these are more emotional uh, navigating uh, the other perspective uh, if you don't listen to a coach or a professional who has more experience uh, than you so your insights your ideas your perspective will just be in a box and you'll not get any other insights and perspectives so you need to go out of your uh, comfort zone you need to um you need to get more ideas through listening th- uh, to these experiences because these experiences and uh, has gone through years already and uh challenges as an individual as a younger professional for example uh like us what i always do is i involve myself i include myself in a group of professionals who have already more experience than me like 40 years in the profession 30 years in the profession because uh you don't know how to make decisions pay tough decisions difficult decisions so you need to be passionate on listening you need to be um passionate on involving yourself with uh, these kinds of individuals and leaders. Alam mo, itong topic ng pagiging coach, feeling ko this this can be another episode. Eh. Kasi sobrang-sobrang dami pang ano, sobrang-sobrang dami pa nating mapag-uusapan sa, sa sphere na to. Kasi, syempre, um, it, it, it's only not, it's not complicated if you're the one coaching is usually parang 10 years, 20 years experience above compared to you. Pero in reality, meron din tayong mga coach or the, the coached people or the mentees na almost same ng level or probably um, in, mm. in an organization, merong chances na yung staff has more work experience compared to the manager. Yeah. Merong mga ganon. So parang it's, it's, a, it's a very complicated sphere and I think we should deserve it for another episode. Talagang... Alam kong maraming maraming pa tayong mapag-uusapan dyan. But for today, we will end our episode here. It's it's super nice talking to you, PJ, as always. Kahit nun pa lang, when I was in JP, ya, talagang dami-dami-dami kong natutunan kapag ikaw yung kausap ko. As, at, saka, at saka, I like how you how you put things in a way na parang, parang ay, oo nga, no? parang, anda, anda, parang andaling intindihin. <laughs> <laughs> parang ganun. So, uh, I just want to ask, um meron ka bang mga gustong i-promote? Uh what are you, what are there any personal projects that you're working on or baka meron kang gustong uh, i- ipakita mga projects sa ating mga uh, mga viewers? So, hopefully you'll support our uh, other projects also personal uh, projects like the CPA stories that uh We've been rolling out since 2015 to inspire and motivate our CPA reviewees. And uh, yeah, so if you have uh, questions and uh, concerns on uh, coaching and other aspects of uh, people development, lear- learning and development, you can reach out to me so I can support you and uh, help you guys 